Ladies and gentlemen, we are back once again with another episode of Guns Up. Now, as the same form we used before, a little bit more information about the Carl Gustav. This time we're going to be talking about the weapon system and the family of ammo that it encompasses. So, without any further ado, my co-host and good friend, JC Knight, take over and let us know all about this fantastic weapon. Sounds good, Sean. Uh, I was thinking ammo. What do you think, gun? Yeah, show the gun. Let, let, let's show this thing off. A lot of people haven't seen it actually held up in somebody's hands. Oh, boy. Look at that. Oh, would you look at that. Uh, like my prize went at home. Hey, <laughs> so here we are. This is the Carl Gustav M3E1 that we spoke about earlier uh, when we did the video on Carl Gustav history and how it found its way to the Marine Corps. So here it is in all its beauty. So what I'm going to do for you guys at home is I'm simply going to talk about the nomenclature of the gun itself. So... Uh, the gun, 14.7 pounds as it sets right now. Uh, we also, the length of the gun is 39 inches. Something else that is great about this compared to um, the last system that the Marine Corps used is when I load this system, it doesn't get any longer. Everything stays inside the gun. Now, when I'm talking to people that uh, I don't feel like explaining, you know, uh, the difference between a rocket launcher and a recoilless rifle, sometimes we'll say, oh, it's a rocket. No, it is a recoilless rifle. So as you look down the barrel, what you will notice is you will notice rifling. It is a recoilless rifle. Uh, and while I've got it there, go ahead and look. Uh, this little piece right here is the barrel shroud, which protects my sight while it's collapsed. So there's our barrel shroud. Now we look across the top of the gun, you're going to see your ruggedized carrying handle, and both of the sling swivels. We look back here, you're going to see your locking, your locking lever, and your venturi and your venturi knob, which uh, is where we load and unload the gun. Look up back here to the front of the gun where I've got my left hand. You'll see that I've got these two little protective cups. That is on my Picatinny rail system, protecting the Picatinny. So if I ever want to take that off and co-witness the laser, I can do so. Uh, and if we look here, pick the gun up, something else is pretty cool. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna leave these bipods. Your bipods easily come out and go back on. And uh, what do we notice on the bottom of this gun? What do we notice about the bottom of the gun? You see how we got all the Picatinny rail? Yeah, what, is, uh, uh, what does that do? It, uh, it was always funny when you'd see a gun that was to a Marine, for example, you see a five foot six rifleman carrying an M16A4 with a bayonet on it. The gun's almost as long as him. It's like the Kentucky long rifle. Uh, with having everything on the Picatinny, you can scale the handles on this gun to the size of the shooter. So, say we have a gunner and an A. Uh, the gunner's six foot four, the A gunner's five foot six. Obviously, those are two Marines that are built extremely different, and the gun needs to be able to compensate for that. So, uh, in the design of the gun, there was thought put into that which I think is, is important for the shooter. I tell you what, that's something that people just don't take into consideration. You see it all the time that people can't qualify some of these weapons because it's not built for them. You know, it's right. one size fits all. No, it's not the case. Unless you're not when you're trying to take a precision shot. That's right. very interesting, and I think that's one of the only weapon systems I've seen actually that has that on there. So that's really unique. Right. So we look up here as well, and what is we've seen a lot of our older rockets and disposable munitions is your firing hand is all over the place okay uh you've got to go back here to cock you got to do here for travel safe this travel safe that you'll notice here that everything is located in my battle rocket, like i just did back blast area clear rocket right i shoot it i cock it on safe or i cock it i put it on safe i go ahead i have my a gunner assist with reloading the gun and I'm back on, back blast area, click, rocket, bang, pocket, put it on safe, repeat process. Uh, we're at five or six rounds per minute, Sean. So we're flying uh, through loading and unloading with the weapon. A question on that, and this is going to sound odd to those that aren't familiarized with kind of like the military weapon systems, but we'll just talk about like for football and stuff like that. You always hear about people getting head injuries and concussions. Well, we have munitions that are explosive. We have munitions that will affect you if right. you are exposed to it. And the reason I say that is because of the thing they call the exposure rate. 
So with some of our weapons, like the small AT4s and whatnot, I know there's a certain amount of exposure rate you're allowed to shoot with those weapons based on the individual. So with those weapons compared to this weapons, where's the difference of value? Is it the same or is it is it not the same? Well, I'm glad you asked. So uh, going to war, we know that just about every weapon system particularly down at the infantry level, is loud. And our supporting arms, artillery pieces, tanks, 81 millimeter mortars, 60 millimeter mortars, uh, the Sasser, the 50 Cal, the Mark 19, all these things are the hand grenade. They're all loud, okay? And that includes the Carlo Gustav. It's obviously loud, okay? Uh, according to the program manager, uh, this weapon system is gonna have a rounds per day that is going to g exceed five or six rounds per day. Uh, probably somewhere north of 10 rounds per day. Now, if a guy has to shoot 10 rounds per day out of this gun, uh, he's in a hell of a fight. And at that point, <laughs> hey, obviously hearing and brain injury, obviously uh, I'm worried about getting out of that situation alive, but I don't ever see a Marine to be exposed to that many rounds in a day. Uh, but if we are shooting a lot of rounds, I will tell you is if I'm shooting this gun, Sean, and you uh, you tucked in here right beside of me. That is the safest place for somebody other than the shooter to be. And as a shooter, I'm probably I'm in the safest place to be be around this gun because I'm I'm not eating a lot of the back. But uh, Marines out there that are listening, I'm really glad you brought this up. Uh, we always have the the corporal, lance corporal, or sergeant, or lieutenant, gunny, whoever that wants to look like they're in charge on a range, stand five to ten feet off of the flank of the gunner and the A-gunner. And instead of wearing their issued Peltor uh, hearing protection, they're over there with some cigarettes or their fingers, cigarette butts or their fingers stuck in their ear. And they wonder why when they get out, they have to go make a pay claim. So if I'm gonna be running a range and this is a rangeism and I don't wanna go down a rabbit hole here, I need to make sure that when I send a gunner and an A-gunner shoot, that I have that point safety officer or that MCO or officer supervising just have them off of the flank 20, 20 meters or so. If I can't trust a Marine to go up there and shoot a rock, I should have identified range to shoot. Okay? So anytime you're shooting anything that goes loud, you don't need to have guys there that are going to be eating excessive back blast. Uh, moreover, when you're doing your uh, pre-combat checks and inspections and you're doing your safety brief, everybody hold up your hearing protection. And as a benefit to the user, every one of these guns is going to come with two sets of Peltor hearing protection. So that's pretty <laughs> awesome in itself, Sean. Yeah, and we've all it. seen those guys, right? 100%. They don't wear their hearing pro. 100%. Do as I say, not as I do. Right. And, and you look like a clown. So uh, trust your Marines and stay out of the back blast. So uh, good question, Sean. Uh, so we talked about the Venturi. We talked about this. Sighting systems, okay? Earlier I showed you uh, the the shroud that protects the site. So if you look on the front of this right here, I flipped it out. That is my, what we call the backup red dot site. Now I'm gonna go down a hole a little bit on this because I think it's important. Uh, some of you are probably, some of you stand by, are probably thinking, hey, I'm a left-handed shooter. Uh, no, you're not, not on this. If you're familiar with red dot technology, you're not dealing with everybody is a right-handed shooter. Is it awkward for a left-handed shooter with a right hand? Sure it is. But with red dot technology, I'm not old front sight post and the fuzzy rear sight aperture. It doesn't happen anymore, okay? I have a parallax free red dot. And the reason that that's important is if I have a Marine that's assault and his adrenaline's up or he's out of gas, okay, he's tired, He's scared, whatever. He needs to be able to quickly get the gun into action, red dot on target, pull trigger, shoot. So that's why we went with the red dot. And um, big credit to Gunnar Barone out of uh, IOC of the Quantico, the infantry officer. He was able to go to Sweden and he had influence in making sure we got this site instead of the iron site. And <laughs> you would not believe the amount of Marine. <clears throat> I grew up on iron sight. Listen, I don't care what you grew up on. I don't care if you still keep your bayonet sharp. 
it's great that you're old school. But if I got a guy that's had to do anybody who's done any amount of fire team rushes, bolts and training and in combat knows that you're going to be out of gas when you get there. And attempting to line up a clear tip of a front sight post is much more difficult than simply placing a red dot on a target. Okay. So that was the theory behind this. And if you ever see Gunnar Barone, thank him because he is the reason that you guys are getting a red dot sight on the front of the gun. No, it's a lot easier having a point and click adventure with the red dot, you know, red dot target, pull trigger, boom on a range for bragging rights. Sure. It's cool to say I can shoot iron sights. Not a lot of people can, but for combat wise and for practical application, that's ingenious. I'm here to prosecute targets, man. Right. So, and if you'll notice, this thing kind of has a sight, sight style to it. So as I adjust my quadrant, you'll notice that I have all kinds of different. Let's see if we can get this in here, Sean. You'll see when I adjust this quadrant located right here in this, in this little open screen is there is a different aim point for all the different types of rounds that we shoot because it's not a one-stop shop. We have so many different types of rounds. And we also have uh, a sighting with the blue dot. That means for when it's below freezing or when it is above. Wait, so you, you have two different colors you said on there? A red we and a blue? No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. So if it's below freezing, we go with the blue. If it's above freezing, we go with the red. What's the, what's the reason behind that? Rounds fly different in the heat than they do in below freezing. Again, when we go back to a, a, when we go back to a recoil rifle, uh, we're dealing with a lot of bullet technology. But a lot of it's bullet technology. So that is the theory behind that. So uh, uh, you got anything else on that on the, on the backup red? Uh, pretty much not uh, really on the, on the backup red dot. I don't have anything on that, but there is something that I've, I was reading about is that there is another site for this yep. system uh, that's made by Aimpoint. Uh, can you tell us about that? Yeah, so my good friend, retired Marine Gunner, he works for Aimpoint. He is essentially their, uh, their business development guy uh, for the site, and he is also a fellow retired gunner, and we usually travel and do these briefs together, but... Uh, COVID-19 being what it is, I am a, I'm, I'm flying solo for this one because usually he's doing briefs. With me, so uh, wherever you're at out there, Jesse, I hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, the site that I just talked about is going to give you, uh, it's going to give you a north of 70% hit probability. So seven, seven and a half, seven shots out of 10 are going to be hits with this uh, as the gun sets right now. And this is what you want to refer to as dumb gun mode. Okay, apply the fundamentals, zero your sight properly, you're going to be nailed. Now, what the fire control gives me, and it's about the size of this good old trusty canteen cup, cheers, is when I hook that onto the side of my gun right here, it's going to add about three and a half pounds. But what it's going to do is, is it's going to increase my hit probability north of 90%, uh, which is a astounding number for a shoulder fired weapon system such as a Carl Gustav. Okay. Fire control gets added on, and what you'll see is, remember what I talked earlier, there's this little toggle switch up here when I grab my forward hand grip, and you kind of see my thumb rotating around that. It allows me to toggle the menu on my fire control. When the fire control's hooked up, it's plugged in here, and what you'll see is we've got a wire, Sean, that goes across the top of the gun. And I think everybody home can see that. It goes across the top of the gun, and if you look, into the back of the gun, we see that little triangle, Sean, right there. There are four little magnetic dots. Those four little magnetic dots will read that round and it will give a ballistic solution to the fire control. That's crazy. There's and something. It will take that dot and adjust, it will take the, the, the red dot and adjust it accordingly to hit the target. That's insane. Uh, that's With crazy. That, they have the technology. We, we also have the ability, and this has been proven in testing. This isn't a, a, a sob sales spiel. This is what the Army has tested and figured out. Is They were using our 502 round, which is our HE round, and they were hitting moving targets at about 300 meters going about 30 miles per hour. They shot 11 shots at a vehicle-sized target, and they scored 10 out of 11 hits. And oh, they shit. think the one hit that they missed was based off of shooter error. Look, I don't care if it's shooter error or not. If you're hitting moving 300 to 30 miles an hour, 10 of 11, that's, that's pretty awesome. So 
That's crazy. There is one thing I want to ask you about that uh, optic on there is that most optics they usually have one reticule or they have like one uh, lens on there. You have two lenses on this aim point optic. What's the difference between the top round lens and the bottom rectangular lens? You simply got a rangefinder, buddy. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's it. Um, and, and something, uh, you know, so, something to think about is that's a great redundant capability and also having the fire control system. So think about, uh, remember when we did range four out at 29 Palms where the machine gunners went? Yeah. If I am a commander and I've got three guns for platoon, let's say I want to go ahead and stick two guns up on top of the hill and have race. The ones up on top of the hill might very well be using the aim point fire control. The one gun that's going down range with the platoon is probably running the backup red dot. So again, just like the ammo switch, your sighting options are giving you, giving you again, multiple options based on the type of fight that you're fighting. So if I'm going to a deliberate ambush site or setting up, probably taking the fire control. If you are going on a, a in a built up environment, in an urban latour, uh, chances are you're probably not going to run the aim. You're going to run your backup red dot sight. So uh, one that you didn't ask me about, but I often do get asked, is when I've got the uh, the fire control system or the backup red dot sight that's on the gun right now. Uh, does it is is it able to be used with with current family of night vision? With MBGs, yes. yeah. So if I've got my MBGs on, be it you've got the 14s or if you have got the new 31s. You can use it with this. And speaking about that, you showed the uh, the Picatinny rails that are on the right hand side of the gun. Right here. Yeah. Would you put on like a Pec two uh, or like a like a Pec like a like a, like yeah. a Pec sixteen? And for those at home, a Pec sixteen is like a it's a night optic, but it's not really an optic. It basically shoots a laser. You can only see either an MVGs. It looks like a lightsaber for God's sakes. Yeah. And you pretty much can mark a target, or you can use that for aiming reticle. And you would pretty much calibrate that to the weapon itself and do the same thing. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I think we've hit just about everything. On any any hanging thoughts out there? No, I mean that's pretty. It's a pretty interesting weapon in itself, you know. And it's just crazy where you look at you know, where we came from. Just even in the past, we'll say you know two decades, so twenty years ago, you know, you just have basically like smooth bores. We're gonna aim at this. We're gonna shoot it, and that's the way it's gonna be. I mean, we're not talking about that. There's not other weapons out there that are rifled, but for the stuff that we carried, it was smooth bore. The fact that now you have a rifled, a uh, recoilless uh, weapon system that can actually reach out there and touch something at a thousand yards and can hit moving targets. This is stuff that it's, we just wish that we would have had this stuff back then because it would have made our jobs a lot easier. The, uh, I know a lot of people at, at home probably are watching this and they saw some of the videos of, of this thing, you know, with the ammo. So that's what I want to get down to is like, what is this thing eats? What do we feed it? What does it look like? Not just in a picture, but in real time, standing next to somebody. Yep. So um, one thing before we jump into ammo, one thing we always mess up is bore sighting. And gotcha. those of us familiar with, with the old system that we used in the infantry company, uh, the small, uh, bore sight kits were hard to come by. It was like finding Bigfoot. Uh, there just weren't many small boresight kits to go around. Something good about Carl Gustav is every gun is going to come with a like this, okay? And with that also being said, every maintenance battalion also now has 3D printers. So you could take and make a backup set of like this come with every gun. So when these come from the factory, they, they get they get the Marine Corps issues them out to everybody, every gun's going to come with a set of boresight. It's very simple. You take your front one disc, you put it in the front, Slap the other one in the back, and then all I simply do is find a distant aiming object, 200 meters, and then I simply adjust my red dots to the, what I can see through my boresight disc. So if I pick something small, like say a a paper plate, something like that, maybe a garbage can, maybe the window, a, a rear view mirror on a, on a vehicle, 200 yards away, simply adjust that adjust that red dot to the center of my boresight disc, guns boresighted. That's so simple. That's ridiculous. It, it's too simple, man. It's, it's too simple. Wow. So uh, that's it on Boresight. And uh, I think we just about covered everything. Ah, one more thing. Round counter. Every gun comes with a round counter. So this thing's going to need to go and get back 100 rounds. 
How many how many rounds was that? You said one two zero zero about twelve hundred. Go okay. go into maintenance. Now, when, when, you, when, you, when you say go into maintenance, do they just go in there, basically look at the rifling inside, look at the weapon, and yep. do they just change? The gate, to... just make sure everything's as it should be, spacings are good, so on and so forth. So, really durable weapon system. I've probably seen this thing shot live 200 times, and I've never seen it. That's, that, that's, a, that's an insane amount of rounds to go through one weapon system before you have to do right. anything to it. So, oh. uh, very ruggedized weapon. So, talk about the, everything we got on the Now we're going to go into ammo. Let me give me a quick swallow here. All right, so nine rounds we talked about that the Marine Corps I've got eight of them. Here. Uh, so I've got one round that I'm going to explain, and then I'm going to act as, if, act as if it is another round. Okay, so first one I'm going to go to. This is one of the bread and butter rounds you're going to do. This is the HEDP 502. Now the 502 round, what does HEDP stand for? For some of you that aren't, aren't familiar with bullet and rocket technology, that is high explosive dual purpose. And what do I mean by that? If I load it with the eye facing up, so at 12 o'clock loaded with an eye, it's gonna be on impact. So as soon as it hits something, it's gonna detonate. If I load it with the D up, that is going to be on delay. So that means it's gonna actually use the cone, it's going to penetrate and blow up on the inside. Now, this is probably our premier bunker buster, okay? And one of the things we used to always hear in the last episode, Sean, we talked about the Commandant. And while we were doing the shoot off, the Commandant said, Gunner, I heard this thing has trouble busting bunkers. And at that time, the senior Gunner in the Marine Corps, Gunner Solmans, he goes, looks at the Commandant, he said, Commandant, we haven't taken down a bunker since Omaha Beach. <laughs> and of course, all the, the staff weenies were like, you know, um, this thing can absolutely destroy a bunker. Just look up 502 uh, on YouTube and you can see what the 502 round will do with a bunker. Now, let's say this is the most awesome, amazing Russian steroid bunker ever. Been. At five or six rounds per minute with a pr hit probability north of 6 go ahead and pump about three or four of these into a bunker. And I... If anybody lives through that, they are not going to want to fight you. It's like seeing Sean <laughs> Christ in a dark alley. You want no part of it. Absolutely not. So, so that's it on this round. And, well, it's not it on this round. Hey, troops in the open at 1,000, moving targets at 300, bunkers at 500. 502 is probably going to be one of the rounds in the Marine Corps infantry. JC, I actually do have a video I could pull up real quick and show the uh... – Feel the people at home of what this round actually does on impact. If you'd like me to Go tell ahead it for and show you. Them, man. All right, so here we have this is the uh, 84 millimeter Carl Gustav HEDP 502 impact. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So let's pull this up. And let's just see what it says here. Here's a slow motion view of it. Jesus. Now, when it showed that round uh, in the slow motion, it looked like that there were fins that kind of came out and kind of guided. Is that how the round is built as well? Yes. And all of our rounds are different. So that's pretty wild. Now it's showing the inside of the vehicle, what it looks like after it penetrated. So it's got complete penetration. I think that was a... Uh, and that round, when, it, when it's taking off... Uh, for those of you hill wumps like me, 100 millimeters is about the equivalent of four inches. Jesus. That's a pretty impressive round. We ready for the next one? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Sounds good. Next up, this here is a smoke round. Uh, not a squad marking device, obviously. But um, could you mark for air? Yes. Could you obscure for squad movement? Yes. Uh, the smoke round, the Smoke 469 Charlie. This plumes about like an 81, and this is going to go 1,300 meters. So, uh, Sean, imagine if we ever had to expel from a street or do a medevac. Uh, you, you know, name your tactical problem. 
having smoke at the squad level that can go over a click is pretty awesome, especially if it's going to have the effect of, say, an 81 millimeter uh, mortar well, round. Well, 100%, awesome. because, again, if you can mark smoke out of a rifle compared to, you know, either throwing a grenade or calling in mortars, that's less time, and you don't got to worry about getting up close to it. Because, I mean, that's the biggest thing. Hell, you can only throw, what, a baseball, maybe... What seventy five yards if you're lucky, maybe a hundred yards if, if you're if you're an athlete or something like that. Throw, you can chuck a baseball hundred yards. You know, that's what I'm saying. But with this thing, it's a hell of a lot distance between you and the objective you're trying to get. And actually, I think I I haven't looked at this video, but I just typed it in real quick, and it says right here, uh, so shooting five consecutive eighty four millimeter smoke rounds from the Carl Gustav. So that's something we can throw up there if they want to see it. Uh, I kind of fast forward it a little bit because I guess that they. We're kind of talking about it, but I'm going to try to get to where they're just shooting it. And hopefully it's a pretty good video. So let's take a look at it real quick. I hope it's a good video. <laughs> I do too. There's a shot. It is snowing, so this will be interesting. <laughs> Camera guy's not the best. It's probably cold, man. Oh, it's it's they're they're bundled up. We tell you. Wow. So you do you do see it? It. I mean, if you look at the video right now, in the left hand side, you can see where they hit, where there is smoke. I mean, it's it's interesting. Okay, you got another target. He hit. That's hitting dead on. That's pretty neat. That's really neat dynamic you have with that weapon. What else you got in the pipeline, brother? Where there is smoke, <laughs> there's there fire. is a loom. Okay? Uh, just like our 81 rounds. Uh, you'll see this. It has an adjustment. Now, where this is going to blow everybody's mind is this thing's going to go 2100. Okay? And Sean, let's always think about the problem. And I always ask this when I'm down there talking to infantry battalions. How many guys of all the nine rifles uh, but in a company, how many of those guys can really call for fire? There's maybe a handful of that. If you got if you got twenty guys, maybe maybe three, maybe four, five, you're lucky. Should be more than that. Should be more. We're talking more realistically. But realistically. And even if they're good at it, how long does it it, it takes a minute to get approved. You got to get approved by hire. Then they got to translate it. Yeah. Imagine this. I'm up in thermals or I'm up in my night vision at night. And I look and I'm like, wow, uh, I've got enemy movement in the city. I know that to be, to be 600 meters away. I adjust my nose come to 600. I put up an loom round for off. It's that fast. And that's pretty awesome. That's much faster than you'd ever get than 81. That's crazy. So 2,100 meters has a burn time. Very so they're almost the same size. What was okay. the burn? What was the burn time at again, JC? Very similar to what you're going to get with an 81. So about 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. Now, the next round we're going to talk about is our 441 AG. Uh, tragically, I do not have it. Uh, it is out with my my green gray and our other gun. So I'm going to use this alum round as if it is the HE441 round. Now, I spoke in our last podcast about the 441 round uh, when it was being tested out at Sea Dragon, and we had a Lance Corporal that was hitting targets out the 1285. So one problem we've always had in combat is trying to dial something in on a defilade position, okay? Not easy to do. And what I've had to do in the past is I've had a soldier, sailor, airman, to clear, say, a courtyard or a wadi or any type of defilade without prepping it properly. So let's say this is my 441 round and I get my rangefinder up, I estimate a target to be 600. Let's call it a courtyard in, in Iraq, Sean, which you and me encountered a lot. And it was always, it was always scary having to send a Marine to prep that courtyard because you're putting you're, you're, a guy's at risk. It's just the way that it is. Right. So imagine if I pull out my 441 round. I set my sights to 600, so or I set my fuse to 600. It's a proximity fuse. 
So when this thing gets to 600, it's going to naturally fly about three meters high and it's going to blow down on top of the enemy, giving me that counter defilade effect. Well, that's so, going to be it's going to be a hell of a, a hell of a better explosion, a hell of a better burst against any kind of personnel. Because if it's anything, anybody knows, if a round impacts the ground, you're going to get about half the explosion. If it's impacting above them, the concussion and the debris that's going to come down is going to be twice, if not five times worse. And let's say I've got an yeah, and think say I've got a a linear defilade position. Let's say it's meters long. I could sheath two or three of these rounds, and I'm covering. Wow. Just like I would a mortar. Okay. Uh, let's say I really want to put the what do we do in the Marine Corps? We want to have that combined arms of where the if, if the enemy decides to stay in the trench, um, he can die from indirect fire. If he wants to get up and run, he's going to get cut down by a machine gun or some type of direct fire. I have a weapon system that's going to give me a combined arms effect uh, by itself without having to use any other weapon. You just have to have the right type of ammo. That's pretty crazy. So if I want to create a hole in, say, a courtyard wall, or bust open a door, I put the 502 in it, and then I throw this over the top. So I'm making damn sure that before I that it's as safe as it possibly can be. So you could pretty much have those things set up in a team. Are you still applying these things in one gun in a squad, or you're going to have like two in a squad? So you could have one loaded, one there's ready one to gun, go. There's one gun per squad, but what's what's being Staff Sergeant Lieutenant, Staff Sergeant Knight, Lieutenant Ray for mass operation. Or I put two guns in one spot and one. Right. Yeah, I mean, those are all options. Awesome. So, uh, we ready for the next one? Yes, sir. So, this one is, Oof. look at this joker. All right, that's the multi-target 7.56 round, okay? What you're going to get with this is this thing's going to destroy uh, 12 inches of reinforced concrete. And here's a problem we had, adobe walls, Sean. Right. This thing's going to reduce and go through Adobe and going to have a devastating explosion on the other side. Note the gigantic warhead. on. The and for those of you at home that are wondering, all of our rounds are about seven pounds. They range between 6.8 and 7.2, with the exception of this one. it's I think it's like 9.2, so it's about nine pounds. And that's but not much difference. It's nine pounds worth carrying for... Or nine pounds, just, or nine pounds just of kick ass. <laughs> you know, I want to put that on somebody. So, uh, what do we got next? Uh, for those of you that like thermobaric effects, Woo! okay, Woo and you get excited by using big words, okay, this is our anti structure munition 509, the ASA. Uh, thermobaric effects very similar to a small, yet you get a seven pound round that doesn't get your make your your gun any longer yeah. and instead of hitting one out of three shots you're probably going to get seven eight out of ten shots unless you're using the fire control and you're going to get every so this isn't to create a hole in a wall to flatten a building so there's our asm 509 round a thorough barrett man everybody got excited when we got those hell they got those were 203s those are exciting to see <laughs> yep so um that leaves us with a couple more options, okay? Uh, here's our heat round, our 551 heat round. This thing's gonna fly about 700 meters, and what it's gonna give you is it's gonna go be able to punch through about 16 inches of armor, okay? So that's a lot, okay? Any troop carrier we're gonna, we're gonna field or on the company level, okay? So don't get excited and think that our infantry is designed to fight a tank battle in the Marine Corps, it's not. If it was, you call a weapons company, they put a javelin on it. Okay, so you guys are going to get the 551. That's going to reduce 16 inches of armor and fly about 700 meters. So Jesus. Uh, I think at this point, one, two, three, four, five, six, I've covered all the live rounds. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about the training suite, Sean. Uh, one thing that the gunner community has, has, has done their research on and has made sure does does right is they are going to make sure that they, they procure the 552 heat round. And what that is, is that is a round that is ballistically to the 551 round, but it's a training round. So remember how we ever we stuff that would go boom? We couldn't maneuver downrange. Right. Produce. 
right. we can actually in training now shoot the 5.52 into a bunker and say we reduce the bunker and Marines have to go trench. They can jump in that trench now because the round is not dud producing. That is awesome because so, you don't got, you got to modify training. You got to stop training. It just continuously flow right. and see how the dynamic so, goes. Yeah. So the, the training efficiency they're going to gain is huge. So I think getting that round is going to pay big training for when they have to go down range and shoot the actual 5.51 round. Now, I, I guess a stupid question, but I'm going to ask you anyway because people at home might not know this. So even though it's a dummy round, will it be painted different or will it be the exact same paint job that's on? It, it, it's blue. It's inert. That's, so that's what I was figuring. So that's the thing. As you can tell, if it's inner, it's blue, and live is usually black or yellow or whatever the hell it is. But so, 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 so you can't screw it up. You can't like take it to combat and be like, oh, shit, I brought the wrong round. It's funny you bring all this up because the next two rounds I'm going to Oh, it's <laughs> funny. So this here is the 20, the 20 millimeter or our 20 millimeter round. It's kind of like a step up round. It's like a baby, if you will. Okay. Uh, you go ahead, you insert the 20 millimeter cartridge, you put your little firing cap, back blast area clear, rocket, boom. Okay. And, uh, you know, Marines have always wanted to ask is it sub where you have to punch it out to sure that the projectile doesn't get stuck? No, you do not. But after every field firing, you simply, you simply clean the 20 millimeter barrel inside the 20 millimeter. Barrel. That's easy. So, so they're going to get that. We also have a couple other options. We have the 762 sub cal, which we're all 20 millimeter sub cal. Uh, and it's ballistically matched as a 762 round to our heat round. So it goes about 700 meters. Huh. So lastly, we have the TPT 141 round. This is great for short range stuff, but this is a big metal, you know, projectile. At 300, that thing drops like. Um, so you just gotta you gotta be aware of that, and it's only good to about three hundred. That's why the five five two round. So, and, so that thing you got your hand right there is it's kind of like I got a shotgun slug, which is a big piece of hunk of metal. But is that a training oh, round or is, is it a live round? Not to hit with it, no. Okay. But for practicing, great. But uh, my problem, you know, it's three hundred meters. I'd rather have something that could go a little. Well, it's what, it's what you're gonna it's what you're gonna shoot at. Yeah, correct. Non dud producing, excuse me. So yeah. That's the TPT 141 round. And that's our training, John, uh, followed credit or preceded by the six live rounds that the Marine Corps are going to get. So, Well, I mean, as a logistic uh, kind of look at the things is that for training, you could buy the same rounds with the same fundamentals and the same techniques as use a live round. So that would cut down on cost right there. Absolutely. It, instead of you using live rounds all the time, you're using training rounds, which, you know, people could say all they want. Oh, we should do it live. Eh, you know what? You can do a hell of a lot more training rounds than you can live rounds. You know, as long as that blanks, if something is, if there's something is a cause and effect, which means you shoot it and there's an effect afterwards, you can still see that and you can still train with that. So that's yeah. pretty interesting. I didn't know that about that thing, man. And then uh, Marines always want to ask about future technologies. So because Saab is a Europe, uh, the thought of fighting Russians. So most stuff is produced what in what first? Anti-tank variants. So we make a lot of anti-tank stuff first, uh, followed by HE and HEDP, which is more of a American, you know, enemy's target set. So uh, one of those rounds is confined space heat round, the 655, okay? So what this means is I can shoot this from inside of a room of the size of a jail cell. Wow. Uh, which is like 2.5 by 2.5 by. So I can actually go in a room, open the, knock a window out, and I can shoot this from the side of a building. This is game changing technology. In that, I no longer have to take a guy. I don't have to put a guy out in the street to take a rocket shot. That's awesome. Imagine that little clump of houses where Carlucci got shot yeah. in Afghanistan. Imagine if we took houses and took a rocket with Carl and Gustav in there and were able to shoot from inside of a building. That's huge. It would have saved so, a lot. It would have saved a lot of uh, a bit of pain in the ass and a lot of pucker factor because if you could shoot from a concealed position as opposed to exposing yourself, that's hands down the better way to do it. Uh, imagine laying a car. You know, you just don't have to expose yourself. I mean, it's a game. So uh, this is already being made and produced. Uh, we also have some things in the works with our 
confined space HE, confined space HEDP. And what Marines will, will also be happy to hear is the Marine Corps is already being, is already bought and procured our confined space AT4 uh, disposable munition. Really? And yeah, so they're going to see that. So imagine the guys that were on post, Bobby. We could have an AT4 on post and a guy doesn't have a post to shoot. And again, uh, not as not they don't go as you have to obviously change the engineering, and you can't take a thousand yard shot today with a confined space round. But I'm at least I, at a minimum I'm matching the effective range of our enemy service rifle, which is the AK-40. Right, which is good up to about maybe 300, 400 if you're decent. Right. So confined space confined space technology is here. We're we're, we're making it. Uh, the U.S. government is buying it. And they need to make sure that when they get the stuff that they're training to it accordingly. You got to start shooting from inside because if I don't have to put a guy in the street, take a rocket shot, I shouldn't. That's just impressive that here. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, we're working on the future so, uh, with some guided technologies uh, that, that's some way down the road. Uh, I'm going to hold off on that for now, but I'm really excited for Marines to get their hands on the gun experience this ammo suite and my, my hat's off to the Marine Corps that they decided to qualify nine rounds and over the next few years kind of figuring out what that right mix is for the warfighter. Uh, again, Sean, uh, I wouldn't put my name on my stamp on I wouldn't work for a company that was going to put something out there that wasn't going to right. be good for, good for our men. So uh, thankful to be on the team, man, for sure. Uh, it's like I said in the last video, it's it's people try and say hey how can i leave my mark on some place and you obviously did that and it's for a practical reason it's a better technology it's better than we have i don't care what anybody says and maybe you hate to hear that but it's the truth this is something we need this is something that you need for the future because technologies only get more advanced and so is your enemy's technology you just want to make sure you have the most versatile thing that can adapt to any situation and it looks like the we're on the road to do that. So my hat's off to you and your gunners that have made this successful, and hats off to the Marine Corps and the military for deciding to go with a better weapon system to replace the old and ancient ones that we have now. Um, I guess I'll just close with this, Sean. I don't think we need part one and part two, but I will ask you, if you took the time to watch this whole video, there are Marines that have not got to get a personal brief from me. I, I've probably briefed about 20 battalions. I've brief, briefed, I want to say, four, four regiments, uh, both SOIs. I've been around to a lot of units. Uh, share this because there are Marines that have not got a brief. And this is going to have Marines spurn some questions. So uh, if you got questions, hit me up. If you got questions, hit Sean up. He'll get a hold of me. Anything you need, anytime you want, any type of brief, Carl Gustav. I'm willing to get it. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to do this and I truly believe it's going to, it's going to enhance our war fighting capability and keep, keep our men alive on the battlefield. No, I think it's, it's going in the right direction and I love it. And like JC said, Hey, you want to try and get a hold of us, get a hold of him, get a hold of me and we'll definitely relay your message. Also on top of that, we post these videos. If you want more of this stuff, if you want other weapon systems, if you want us to try and get a hold of different things, we could probably try and do that and talk about it to give you more of an education because it's one thing going on there and hearing somebody read it from a script or hearing somebody you know talk about but never used it. You've got two veterans right here that have used a lot of this stuff. And like I said, Gunnar Knight, he's been around the Marine Corps for 23 years. He is vital to the success and to the future of what's going on to. So if you have any technical questions about any kind of war fighting uh, vehicle not, or munitions, get a hold of him because he's your number one guy to talk to. And, and, and let me close with this. Uh, you know, the, the, on a personal note, uh, many times I was written off, you know, I, who cares what this guy says? Uh, I believed in that gun when, no, when nobody had the uh, testicle testicle fortitude. fortitude. Yeah. To you know, or the the spine to get up and just fight something. Uh, I did uh, a lot of peer pressure. A lot of senior Marines told me to keep my mouth. Shut. If you're sitting in a barracks room somewhere, or you're a young officer, you're a brand new gunner, you're you know, you're a Marine that's somewhere. If you believe in something, educate yourself on it. Confront people with fact. Go find people you know that are like my. 
And once you kind of got the sniff test from them, that's like, okay, you're not crazy. <clears throat> you need to push with this. Do that. Okay. I mean, here we are because I wouldn't give up or talk somebody. Talk. Carl Gustav's going to be in the Marine Corps. And that's pretty damn awesome. And, I, and I'm excited about it. So, Sean, once again, thanks for having me and everybody out there. Semper Fi, and I look forward to hearing from you and share the damn videos. I love you. Thank you, JC. It's always a pleasure having you. Y'all take care. Yep. Semper Fi.